And welcome back. I'm Rachel Roller. A quick look at the markets this morning. The Dow Jones heading south a bit yesterday, losing a little more than 211 points. The S&P and Nasdaq also giving back. Futures are up. So joining us now to break down our business headlines is Executive Vice President of the Commonwealth Foundation, Jennifer Stefano. Also, business and market analyst and Newsmax contributor, Seth Denson, and America's accountant, Dan Geltrude. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Rachel. All right, let's start with Target hitting the mark. Seeing sales rise as holiday shopping's kicking in early. Retailers are trying to sidestep those chain snags. Target, okay, actually chartered its own shipping vessels to make sure that their goods got there in time, in time for the holiday rush. We heard about stores saying they were going to do this. Seems like it worked for them, worked for Walmart also. But Jennifer, the problem here, we always tell people shop small, small business. Many small businesses don't have the means to do this. So how are they going to survive this holiday season? Right. Well, that's a really great question for them. And it also, they're going to have to pass on the cost to consumers faster than, say, a Target or Walmart will because they can more readily absorb those cost increases in, in, in both due to inflation and energy prices. So the little guy is really going to struggle here. But I think one and the same um, Americans should still look in their community to help them out and, and to work with them. But these supply chain issues, uh, which President, the Biden administration called high class problems. Well, A, thanks for calling working people high class and B, really are breaking the backs of small business owners. All right. Something else interesting we're seeing right now. We constantly hear about hospitals having a tough time keeping doctors and nurses, whether it's through the pandemic, through vaccine mandates, et cetera. Now we're hearing that nurses are getting raises from hospitals that are desperate to keep them. So, Seth, these hospitals really doing what they can to not only keep their employees, but also keep them happy. How long do you see this being an issue? Well, now they are. So many of these hospitals mm. were forcing many of these nurses to do the vaccine uh, without, you know, with no option, really, or they're fired. And so these are people, these are heroes. These are people for over the last 18 to two months to two years. We have needed desperately to work overtime, effectively missing their family, missing their lives, and in some cases, losing their lives. It's estimated that the United States is going to have a, a shortage of over a million nurses by the year 2030. So we've got to start treating these people better so more people will want to get into this field and certainly the way we've treated them over the last few months it's not it's not been good we had a nurse on the show earlier this week with a photo that went viral showing her shoes and badge and all the things she's done over her career wearing those shoes wearing that badge and then she essentially had to resign over the vaccine mandate let's talk about Shame. not just hospitals yes jen what's her name uh john deere workers okaying a contract ending a month-long strike they made out pretty well that deal includes an eight thousand five hundred dollar signing bonus and a 20 percent increase in wages over the lifetime of contracts with 10 percent this year so dan not just hospitals other companies trying to do what they can to keep their employees yeah, right now, employees are in the driver's seat because companies need their workers. So with supply and demand, they're going to have to pay more to have their people do the work that needs to be done. But in this particular case, and, and although many may celebrate to say, isn't this great for workers? And it is gr uh, a great thing for the workers. Do you think that John Deere is just going to absorb all these additional labor costs? They are not. Nothing is free. It is going to get passed along ultimately to the consumer, hence why inflation will continue to rise. Nothing is free. Haven't we learned that yet? All right, let's talk about yeah. SpaceX. They're hoping to launch the first orbital test flight of its massive Starship rocket in January. The goal is to get cargo and people on missions to the moon and Mars. So, Jennifer, obviously a fascinating idea, exciting as well. Do you think now is the time for this or could we possibly Elon Musk be putting his money to better use? No, look, first of all, it's his money. He can do with it what he wants within moral, legal, and ethical bounds. So, you know, God bless the free market and freedom. And how magnificent that he's doing it as a private citizen and a private company. Yeah, no, I think it's always the right time to look to the stars, <laughs> to dream big and to think big. I think it's great that this is going on. I look, when the space program started, it was a peaceful way for the United States and the former USSR to compete with one another to do great and good things. And I think the American space program is something all of us can be proud of and all of us can unite around. And we should really applaud the people, um, particularly um, entrepreneurs in the private sector who are looking to take us to the stars. I think it's a big win for everyone. His, inspirational. his money, his problems. Seth, your thoughts? 
Oh, no, I, listen, I couldn't agree more. I love it when private sector comes in and says, hey, step aside, federal government. We got this. Uh, and they show us how, how, how to get it done. Listen, I think that flights on, um, you know, whatever uh, Amazon's is, I can't even remember the name of it now, but like $250,000. So it's not something that I will be partaking in anytime soon, but maybe Dan will. Maybe Dan will. All right, this last one. Dan, I feel like you'll just be into it. So let's end here. Uh, the Egg McMuffin is turning 50. And to celebrate, McDonald's is offering that famous sandwich at a throwback price of 63 cents. So it's kind of the opposite of inflation here, wouldn't you say? Well, it is, and I am so glad to hear this, as probably all the viewers have heard me say before, I love McDonald's. <laughs> so if they are rolling back those prices, I will be there today enjoying every last bite. <laughs> Jennifer. Don't lie, Dan. You've been there twice already this morning. Come on. <laughs> All right. Yes. yes. I feel like we always have a mom of young children. I live for the drive throughs I mean, they are life saving. God bless. How you do know, women survive before them? Having a, a new child myself, I am having all these recollections of my mom taking me through and just ordering the Happy Meals from any drive through that was possible just to keep us quiet in the back. So I'm sure that's in my future as well. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, thank yeah. you so much before for joining us. Before I had children, I would have never fed them fast food. Then right. I became a mother and I just fling cookies in there, like whatever it takes. It's one of those things you think cookies. about. It's whatever too unhealthy. It they'll never eat it. If this will make you be quiet here, it's all yours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anything to be quiet. Jennifer Stefano, Seth Denson, Dan Geltrude, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having us. All right.